To God be the glory, to God be the honor, and you already know it, to God be the praise. Never should we or can we take credit for what we are and what God has brought us through. It's nothing but the grace and the mercy of God. I just want to say thank you to all those who are listening, whether that be online, uh, social, via social media, or also over the radio. I just want to say thank you. And I also want to say I love you. I love you. I have ran into numerous individuals who have told me in public how this Wednesday word with Sterling Boulevard has truly been a blessing to their soul. So I just want to say thank you for all you beautiful souls out there who take out the time from 12 to 1230 to listen to me. I just want to say thank you. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we love you. Heavenly Father, we need you. Heavenly Father, we know we cannot make it without you. And here we are at this time to break the bread of life with these your sheep. We pray that revelation and knowledge will flow freely, uninterrupted and unhindered by any satanic or demonic force. Speak through my vocal cord and think through my mind. All of you and none of me, I must decrease and you must increase. We thank you that the devil is defeated. You, O oh God, are exalted and Jesus Christ is Lord. Holy Spirit, move through me that the things that I have studied may come out in the process of this message. We love you, but we must admit that you first loved us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. A wise man, as a matter of fact, uh, that wise man, I spoke to him this morning, a mentor of mine, Floyd Rose from Valdosta, Georgia, 80 years old, uh, said to me that if we do not save our children, then they will destroy us. Floyd Rose said that over 10 years ago, and it, it fell on me this morning. I said, let me call Pastor Floyd and see if he still feels the same. I said, Floyd, if we don't, don't, say, if we don't save our children, they will discuss. He said, yes, you're right. And I still believe that. If we do not save our children, they will discuss us. Jeremiah chapter 6. Jeremiah chapter 6. Jeremiah chapter 6. Jeremiah chapter 6. Help me, Holy Spirit. Jeremiah chapter 6. Amen. Verse number 16. And this is what the word of God says. Thus said the Lord. Stand ye in the ways. I want you to get this, my brothers and sisters. Stand ye in the ways. And see, and ask for the old path. See, I want you to circle that. For those who believe your Bible is the word of God, but it also can be your journal. Underline old paths. Where is the good way? And walk therein, and you shall find rest for your souls. But the people responded and said, we don't want the old way. My God, I'm going to read that again. Let me read that again. Thus says the Lord, stand ye in the ways and see and ask for the old paths. Where is the good way and walk therein and you shall find rest for your souls. But the people responded and said, we don't want the old ways. My God. For a brief moment, I want to speak from a subject and it's simply this. Those old folks knew what they were talking about. Those old folks knew they knew what they were talking about. They knew what they were talking about. Right here in the sixth chapter of Jeremiah, Approximately during 506 BC. It amazes me that Jeremiah had an antidote for the pain and the suffering of the people. And although there was so many years ago, what Jeremiah was giving the people for an antidote is the same thing God is telling us in the 21st century. 
the youth were blinded of discernment way back then. Parents back then were losing hope in God. The nation was on the brink of ruin. They were politicking over principles. The young had no respect for the old. And Jeremiah said, if the people of Israel or if the nation of Israel is to have any hope of salvation, you got to go back to the old paths. If the United States of America is to be saved at a critical time like this, then the antidote God has given the United States, and not just the United States, but the whole world, if the whole world is to be saved at a time like this, the antidote God has given the church on today, I need you to go back to the old paths. I need you to go back. To the old paths. So I just want to speak for a brief moment. Those old folks knew what they were talking about. They knew what they were talking about. You got the King James Version. You got the New King James Version. But I know a lot of y'all know about the old Negro folk Version. Mm. Break it down, Pastor Gil. What you, what, what you mean about the old, old Negro folk virgin? The old Negro folk virgin. Grandma probably didn't know all that much about speaking right. She didn't know the, 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 the scripture verbatim, but she read the word of God enough to give you a, a word of wisdom that lines up with a scripture. She knew nothing about homiletics and hermeneutics, but she knew something about God. And those old folks knew what they were talking about. And as long as old folks was teaching the young back then, the world was in a better condition than it is now. So give me something those old Negro folks version of the Bible used to say. A disobedient child won't live their days out. My God. And as I studied the word of God and I come over these scriptures, I realized that those old folks knew what they were talking about. They were not speaking from their own intellect. They were giving you the word of God, but they did not know how to quote the scripture verbatim. But if you read the God, the word of God long enough and diligent enough, you can go and find in the scripture what grandma was trying to get you to see. My God. So what did she mean when she said a disobedient child? Won't live to see their days out. Exodus 20. Exodus 20. Exodus 20. Exodus 20. Thank you so much, Holy Spirit. It is some good stuff. Lord, I thank you for leaving your word. This is some mighty good stuff. If you ain't saying amen on the other end of this phone, something wrong. Exodus 20. Look what the word of God says in verse number 12. Children, honor your father and your mother that your days may be long in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Wait, 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 wait. Let me read that again. Children, honor thy father and thy mother that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. That sounds like grandma. That sounds like them old folks. And just like I said, they could not quote the scripture verbatim, but if you spend time with God long enough, you would know what grandma was trying to say and that's why I called it the old negro folk version of the bible they had their own version they had their own version they had their own version but they knew some they had their own version but they tapped into some they had their own version but they came they became one with a power that's more powerful than all powerful uh, they came in contact with the most high and they were able to drop some words of wisdom in your spirit and even though you did not want to listen or hear it years later you came back and realized those old folks knew what they were talking about Several years, many years ago, I was a, 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 a little boy and I had a cousin at a family reunion who, who had went down the wrong path. And at this family reunion, he was cussing the elderly people out and no one can bind him, not even with fetters and chains. No one 
could 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 put them in place. Uh, just 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 profane words. Just you can't tell me this. You can't tell me this. I'm gonna die. Sixteen years old, and I remember one of the elderly members of my family. I can't recall who it was. Looked at him and said, "Baby, you ain't gonna live to see this year out. You ain't gonna live." To see this year out. And once we left that family reunion in New York City, we made our way back to Mississippi where we all live. And that same cousin came to the house one day and told my mother he wanted to go to church with us on Sunday. She said church started at nine. He said it'll be a fine time to go before the Lord and shine. He left our house. Shortly thereafter, we got a call and said my cousin had been shot down and killed. But how do you think that made us feel? If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. And if my soul is not in shape for him to take, to get it right, I think I need another day. A disobedient child won't live to see their days out, grandma was simply talking about Exodus chapter 20, verse number 12. When someone is trying to lead you in the way of God and you make a conscious effort to ignore the voice of God and disobey those elderly people who have been in charge over your life, if you don't get yourself together, you won't live to see your days out. You won't live to fulfill all the days God had for you. And it, it blows my mind when people say, well, it was his time to go. It was his time to go. It was his time to go. No, 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 no. Sometimes we can speed up death. And this is all that this scripture is talking about. When it says you won't live your days, that means God had a calendar. He wanted you to live this long, but because of your disobedience of not submitting to authority of those elderly people, you didn't live your days out. So that means you left before your time. You left before your time. Those old folks knew what they were talking about. They knew what they were talking about. Give me something else, Pastor Gill, that that, 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 that that old Negro folks version of the Bible used to say. Well, let me tell you, baby, Sin will keep you long, longer than you plan on staying. My God. <laughs> grandma, what you, grandma, what, grandma, what you talking about? Listen, baby. Sin will keep you longer than you plan on staying. Right. You thought you was going for one night, but sin is like a lecture wire. First you grab it, and then it grabs you and don't let you go. My God. Grandma, show me, show me, Grandma, in the Bible what, where you get that type of uh, Negro spiritual from. James chapter 1. James chapter 1. James chapter 1. James chapter 1. And the Holy Spirit gave me this early this morning. About 3 o'clock this morning, the Holy Spirit gave me this revelation. I said, my God, my God, Grandma them, Auntie them, Mama them. Knew, knew, knew exactly what they were talking about. They weren't crazy. We thought they were crazy. They weren't crazy. Look at James chapter 1. This is what grandma was trying to say, but she didn't know how to, how to read this thing verbatim and, rem and re re remember it. Watch this. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempted he any man. But every man is tempted when he's drawn away of his own lust and enticed. What does that mean? We all have something we like. I don't care how big your hat is on Sunday. You have a sin you like, Perlene. I don't care how good your suit look, uh, uh, Deacon Earl. You have a sin, Deacon Earl, that you like. So let's get that established. So since we have this thing that we like, the devil knows how to entice us. And if we're not walking in the word of God, we fall into the first step of lust and enticement. So when you fall into lust and enticement, 
Now the thought of what you want to do has been conceived in the mind. I'm going somewhere. I'm teaching better than y'all saying amen. So just say, for instance, if drinking is your thing, the devil will put drinking right in front of you. And if you sit there and look at that bottle long enough, you're going to start thinking of how good it used to make you feel. So that means it has been enticed and now it has conceived in the mind. Once it has conceived in the mind and you have not cast down those thoughts. See, that's why the Bible says, though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling downs of stronghold. Pastor Gil, what is a stronghold? A stronghold is that thing that you like. You did it so many times that you have now built a building in your mind telling you it's okay. Ain't nothing wrong with this. I can do this. I, there, there will be no uh, consequences to this. Now you done built up a stronghold in your mind. So now it has conceived in your mind. Watch this now. Once it has conceived in your mind, it bring forth sin. My God, Grandma. I, I, I see where Grandma going with this. Grandma, I see where you going. Once it has, it bring forth sin. And sin when it is finished. So you thought you was going to have one drink. Now you drinking every day. Now you drinking every week. Now you drinking every month. When it is finished with you. When sin is finished. It brings forth death. Wow. 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 Baby. Sin will keep you. Longer than you plan on staying. Man, as I read that Bible, grandma didn't know how to quote that scripture verbatim, but she got it in her spirit long enough where she can give you some mother wit. My God. My God. I'm not convinced, grandma. I'm not convinced. Well, baby, if you're not convinced, just meet me on over there in Proverbs. Proverbs. Proverbs 6. Amen. We're going to meet grandma over there in Proverbs 6. Since some of you all are not convinced of what grandma was saying when she said, baby, sin will keep you longer than you plan on staying. Longer than you plan on staying. So as, at this moment, while we're reading this, I just want you to think back to Madea. I just want your heart to be so warm on Madea and big mama them that that brought you up in the admonition of the Lord. And you, you, you're, you're a better person because of that. I want this, I want this study right here to just warm your heart uh, and be thankful for the people God has put in your life at a young age that has you on the straight and narrow now because you followed their wisdom, my God. Proverbs 6, look at the word of God in verse number 27. Can a man take fire in his bosom and his clothes not be burned? Can one go upon hot coals and his feet be not burned? Oh, y'all didn't catch that. Can a man take fire in his bosom and his clothes not be burned? Can one go upon hot coals and his feet be not burned? What, what it's simply saying is, let me just translate the King James Version into the old Negro folks version. It's simply saying, sin will keep you longer than your plan on stand. It's going to burn you. You keep playing with it, it's going to burn you. And if you play with it long enough, it's going to burn your house down. It's going to burn your finance down. It's going to burn your relationship down. It's going to burn your marriage down. It's going to burn your health down. It's going to burn your mind down. It's going to burn you down. Don't let the devil deceive you. Well, 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 you know, I, 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 I can do this. I, I can do that. I'm going to just put this hundred dollars to, to, to the side. I'm going to go gamble. I'm, I'm going to just, I'm going to just gamble this. And then you end up gambling your whole check. And now you're looking crazy and wonder why, wonder why, what, what's going on? Ain't nothing going wrong. Every man is wise in his own eye. You thought you can go and spend a hundred dollars on gambling and you done spent your whole mortgage. That's what happens when we are deceived to think that we can play with the system of the world and not get burned and not get burned 
and not get burned. I, I need something else from my dear, because we're coming to a close. My dear, we got we got about 10 more minutes, my dear. Okay, let me hurry up, baby, and get you something else, baby. What else you gonna give us, my dear? Baby, just live a little longer. J -j -j just live a little longer. Again, she didn't know how to uh, quote this scripture verbatim, but if you read the word of God long enough, you'll know what grandma was trying to say. Meet me in Hebrews chapter 12. My God. Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12. Holy Spirit, we, we love you so much. Lord, deliver us. Deliver us from sin, the sin that we like. Deliver us, Lord. Teach us how to confess and repent. Anytime that we fall, Lord, Thank you, Lord. We don't want sin to be full grown, Lord. We don't want sin to be finished. We, we want to knock it down when it comes to the mind, Lord. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. We want to be more like you. We want to be more like you. Look at the word of God says in Hebrews 12, verse number 11. Don't forget what grandma said. Just live a little longer. Let's see what grandma meant by that. that grandma was talking about whenever older people was trying to correct us. And we thought we knew more than them. When we thought we knew more than them, grandma would say, baby, I ain't going to argue with you. You're you spewing my word right now. You're trying to spew my word. I mean, you're trying to argue and dispute with me, but just live a little longer. Look at the word of God says in verse number 11. Now, no chastening for the present seemed to be joy. That means grandma said, I know it don't feel good because I'm getting on to you right now. I know it doesn't feel good because I'm correcting you right now. So the word of God is saying the same thing. Chastening mean uh, rebuke. Chastening mean uh, to whip or, or to, to, to correct. So I know it don't feel good because I'm correcting you right now. I know it doesn't feel good in the present. I know it doesn't bring joy right now, but it seems like it's grievous. But watch this now. Lord, glory, hallelujah. Look what it says. But nevertheless... Afterwards, or as you live a little longer, that's the same thing you're saying. It's saying the same thing grandma was saying. Nevertheless, afterward, it yielded a peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them that are exercised thereby. Translate that into grandma language for me. He said, I know it don't feel good because you're hearing the truth right now. But if you live a little longer, it's going to give you a fruit of the spirit that you will one day have self-control if you just let this thing exercise you, if you live a little longer and take what I'm giving you, you're going to bear some fruit. And that's what God is calling the church to do. Bear some fruit. What are some fruit? Love, joy, meekness, self-control. You're going to have some fruit. Just live a little longer. Just live. Just live a little longer. I realized grandma went, grandma went telling me the wrong thing. I realized Grandma was telling me the truth. I realized that Grandma was trying to, was not trying to keep me from having fun. Grandma was trying to save my soul. When I thought I didn't want to live by the rules of the house anymore, I, I, I realized now I'm giving my same kids the same advice. Oh, it amazes me how the tables are turned. The things that mama and grandma used to tell us and we thought they were grievous to our soul, now we realize it's joyous. It's joyous. Lord, I thank you for the rebuke. I thank you for the chastising. I thank you for the correcting because now I'm telling my babies the same thing. Those old folks knew. They knew what they were talking about. They knew what they was talking about. They knew what they was talking about. Okay, Grandma, we got about seven more minutes, Grandma, but the people still want a little bit more wisdom. Friends change on you when you get your life right with the Lord. <laughs> grandma, Grandma, I, I don't think Perlene heard you back there in the back. She done fell asleep with her big hat on. Friends change on you when you get your life right with the Lord. Family turn on you when you get your life right with the Lord. Oh, let's go see. Let's go to Acts. Let's go to Acts. Let's go to Acts. Let's go to Acts. Man, this is good. This is good. I hope y'all taking this down. For those who want to get this sermon, it's always on my, my wife and our Facebook page. So for those on the radio who want to hear this again, just go to Facebook and type in Steve K. S-T-E-V-E-K-A-Y. 
and you can get this sermon once the radio broadcast go off and you can always listen to it. Acts chapter nine. Look at what the look at the word of God says. Look what the word of God says in Acts nine, verse 22. Watch this now. This is going to blow your mind. Oh, this is good. See, grandma didn't know how to quote this, but she read it long enough to, 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 to give, give you an understanding of what she's trying to hit on. Watch this now. But Saul increased, or Paul, his name was Saul, or many of us call him Paul. But Saul increased in the Lord. That means he grew more in the strength of the Lord and confounded the Jews. That means Paul was out there getting his life right with God. He was converting people. Watch this now. He, he, he confounded the Jews which dealt, dwelt in Damascus. Proving that Jesus was the very Christ. Now, don't, don't forget now, he was just living contrary. Now he's preaching a gospel and he's changing lives. Watch this verse number 23. And after that many days were fulfilled, the Jews took counsel to kill him. But their laying await was known of Saul and they watched the city gates at night to try to kill him. Wait, 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 wait. These are the same friends that was running with him trying to help him kill Christians. Now that Paul got his life right with the Lord, they want to kill him. Oh, man, y'all, see, see, I knew it was going to be too heavy. I knew it was going to be too heavy for y'all. Don't forget what happened in the introduction of Acts chapter 9. There was a group of friends walking with Saul, and they were on their way to Damascus to kill and lock up and imprison believers. Now he goes to the city called Scrape, uh, uh, inquired of the house of Judas, a uh, Saul of Tarsus in the house getting his life right with the Lord. And now God is starting to use him and the same friends he was running with. Now they want to kill him. Friends change on you when you're trying to get your life right with the Lord. When you're trying to get your life right with the Lord. Okay, grandma, we got time for one more and we need this one to be good. And this is what grandma is saying. Keep God first in everything you do. Keep God first in everything you do. I think grandma was talking about Matthew 6. 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 Look at verse number 25. Look at verse number 25. Therefore, I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat or what you should drink, nor your body or what you should put on is not the life more than meat and the body more than raiment. He said, your priorities do not need to be on things. Your priorities do not need to be on bills. Your priorities does not need to be on clothes and necklaces and watches and houses and cars. That stuff will come one day, but that does not need to be your focal point. Verse number 26. Behold the fowls of the air. For they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much more than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can add a cubit to his stature? He said, you don't even have enough power to make yourself grow. Get your priorities together. 28. And why take ye thought for your raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow and they toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothe the grass of the field, which is today is and tomorrow is cast into an oven, shall he not much more clothe ye, O ye of little faith? Therefore, take no thought, saying, what shall I eat or what shall I drink or whether with all shall we be clothed? For after all, these are the things that unbelievers are seeking. My God, he said... <laughs> Unbelievers got their priorities mixed up. Don't you be a believer, but you got your priorities mixed up. Keep the Lord first, baby, in everything that you do. For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that you need have need of all these things. Things, things. They're simply things. Money is a thing. But verse 33 is my most most my favorite scripture in all the Bible. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Watch this now. Oh, Lord, I love you so much. 
and all these things shall be added, shall be added unto you. Keep God first, baby, and everything you do. Keep them first. Keep them first. And the car, the money, the house, all that stuff, it'll come. It'll come. But you got to keep God first. Those old folks knew. They knew what they was talking about. So I just want you to thank God on today for all those elderly mentors and father figures and mother figures that came, came in your life. I heard this, and I'm going to close with this, and I want you to remember this. A wise man once said, it doesn't matter who you came from. All that matters is who you came through. It doesn't matter who you came from. It doesn't matter what womb you came out of. All that matters in this thing called life is who you came through. It's talking about those influential people that you came through that made the greatest difference in your life. Why don't you come worship at Sterling Boulevard? We're trying to love the unlovable, touch the hearts of the untouchable, and forgive the unforgivable. For the next three months, Sterling Boulevard is having family and friends day for the next three months. And we're trying to see what member can invite the most individuals for the next three months. Just pop in. You know where we're located. God loves you and I love you too. Be blessed.